the high energy lifestyle of hummingbirds presents several challenges. Hummingbirds have to ensure a constant supply of energy to fuel their rapid wing beats. But they also have to worry about storing enough energy to make it through a long overnight fast or power a migratory journey. They do this eating nothing but simple sugars and nectar. My name is Ken Welch and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biology here at the University of Toronto Scarborough and I'm a vertebrate comparative physiologist and this is Chris Chen. Chris recently completed his master's degree in my lab. When I found out that Dr. Kenneth Welch does this kind of research with metabolic physiology, muscle physiology, and with hummingbirds, I thought it was a unique opportunity as hummingbirds are not a typical lab model that you usually see in the field. So I thought this was a great opportunity to join his lab and examine how hummingbirds are able to do what they do. We all know that hummingbirds like eating nectar, uh, floral nectar, and really all that is is sugar water. And that is the sole source of most of their energy. So we asked the question, what do hummingbirds burn to power their extremely energetic hovering flight? They can fuel basically all of that expensive hovering metabolism with the sugar that they've been drinking just 20 minutes prior. And then we asked the question, well, what about the individual components of that sugar? We know table sugar, sucrose, it's what we add to our cereal or our coffee. That is glucose and fructose. And if anybody's been paying attention to the news, they know that fructose is a bad character. High fructose corn syrup and the prevalence of that in our diet these days is correlated with the rise in obesity in humans. And part of the reason for that is, is that we're not good at using fructose specifically. We can't burn it directly in our muscles to fuel our exercise. Instead, we take it into our liver. And in our liver, it can be turned into fat. That's part of the reason we see this, this correlation of obesity and the intake of fructose. In hummingbirds, because they can apparently burn fructose so readily, it looks like their muscles can take up fructose at very high rates. And that suggests that there are important differences about the way that these little birds manage blood sugar and move sugar from the blood to the tissues like muscles. So if we can better understand how they're doing it in ways which are different from us, perhaps we can gain additional insights that will inform our understanding of when things go wrong in humans. Or if they do, are there alternative strategies to help people, for example, with diabetes, to manage their condition? And so we're increasingly exploring those uh, aspects of blood sugar regulation in my lab, as are others elsewhere in the hopes of figuring out how these unique animals have unique solutions to problems we all face.